More Cascadia earthquakes today. They're shaking the west coast. Magnitude 4.5 at the border of Washington with Canada at uh, the area of Vancouver Island. Magnitude 2.5 hours later. And of course, a 4.6 near Los Angeles in Barstow, California. And we've also had an earthquake, of course, outside of that area. 3.1, Ferndale, California. They're all shallow earthquakes. Let's take a look at them together because it looks like the 4.5 that hit Washington hours later hit Barstow, California. And that's basically the type of motion that we see. That's what we saw on the July 4th quake. The uh, Vancouver Island earthquake gave uh, the 6.4 magnitude earthquake to Ridgecrest just 13 hours later. And that was the foreshock to the 7.1 on July 5th. And it seems that uh, the geologists are right that the Cascadia faults do somehow jolt San Andreas and Southern California. Let's take a look at what's happening there today. Okay, here we are at Sizemo Berkeley. This is the quake that we're talking about. I don't have all the earthquakes here, but I will put them on. You'll see a tremendous amount going on. 4.5, Knee Bay, Washington, 10 kilometers. And whereas Canada has it as a um, 4.5, Banfield, British Columbia. So you can see it's basically right on the border, right there. And look at, the, this is all this week's uh, activity on Cascadia, as you can see right there. Now, going back to the U.S. map, this is our Barstow area right there, the details there. And we can see that over, well, just about 3,500 people reported feeling that. And there's the Los Angeles area, as you can see. Let's go to the shake map, the shake area, as you can see, it was felt. Now, this, um, this square stops there, but obviously these contours go all the way around. It doesn't matter if the square stops there, you can see that if it was not stopped, that they could go all around this area. And um, this is Ridgecrest right there, just about there. This is the San Andreas Fault. And that's the garlic fault right there. And this is the Walker Lane fault system. Walker Lane fault system that takes up the 25% uh, of the subduction pressure. And San Andreas fault takes up 75%. Okay, and this is around Ferndale, as we can see here. That's the Juan de Fuca plate, the Segorda plate. And one of the most seismically dangerous areas of the world. Now, Going back to this, that's Barstow, we said, and this is the one that we had here, 3.1 Ferndale. I think some people did feel that. Okay, maybe they took it off, but I, I was under the impression that one person felt it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, this 4.5, 617 people reported, whereas the other one, Three and a half thousand, we said, had reported feeling it. Three and a half reported feeling it, as we could see. Okay. No tsunami warning. Shake alert. Confirmed. Shake alert. So they did, they did, uh, a lot of people have that shake alert app so that they can be notified when they do have uh, a strong quake coming in okay so let's put on the other earthquakes and you can see most of them under 2.5 as well and that's the activity as you can see there that's the latest one the red is the past hour searles valley that's the cost of volcanic field that's ridge crest as we can see the cascadia uh, pnsn report cascadia subduction zone is a mega thrust fault and it's a thousand kilometers long dipping fault that stretches from northern Vancouver northern Vancouver here it is right there that's where we had the Bella Bella earthquake on uh, 13 hours before the July 4th morning earthquake 13 hours later we had the, it hit 
in Ridgecrest at, with a 6.4 magnitude, and the day later, the 7.1 in Ridgecrest. Okay, it stretches from northern Vancouver Island, right here, to Cape Mendocino, California, and that's where we had the um, Ferndale, the Ferndale earthquake right there, okay, right there, and you can see the fault line right there, and um, basically, it separates the Juan de Fuca plate, that's it right here, and North America plates, the new Juan de Fuca plate is created offshore along the Juan de Fuca ridge, and the Juan de Fuca plate moves towards and eventually is shoved beneath the continental, as you can see the arrows going there, North American plate. Okay, now I'll read, I'll keep on reading as you watch the map. At depths shallower than 30 kilometers or so, the Cascadia subduction zone, CSZ, is locked by friction while strain slowly builds up as the subduction forces act until the fault's frictional strength is exceeded and the rocks split past each other along the fault in a megathrust earthquake. And that's why they're warning us, they're expecting, you know, that's why everyone is told to get their shake app to be warned and it'll give you a couple of seconds to take cover because of these megathrusts. We just saw what happened in Turkey. Uh, Turkey had, uh, it's, it's amazing, the um, earthquake, the, it's pulverized, it has pulverized the buildings. Look at this, this is started last night, and you'll see some X, where is it, I just saw one with the, look at this, look at this, look at this. This, is, this is, this has to be torn down, these buildings, most of these buildings have to be torn down, as you can see, pulverized cement, they were so strong, pulverized cement, and they're still, look at this, this is not, non-existent. Um, very bad situation. So th that's what happens, and that was a set, that was a six point nine, downgraded to a six point seven. And that going on with this Cascadia earthquake zone. So um, the rocks slip past each other along the fault in a mega thrust earthquake. The fault's frictional properties change with depth such that immediately below the locked part is a strip, the transition zone, that slides in slow slip events. The slow slip events. Uh, and tremor observations. Okay, slow slip episodes affect southern British Columbia and northern Washington. That's where we've had our quakes today. Have been occurring every 14 months or so since at least the 1990s. The PNSN monitors the non-volcanic tremor associated with slow slip and has deployed additional seismometers from time to time to record ex expected tremor events to gain insight into the process and into the stresses that eventually will lead to the region's next major earthquake. Any different techniques are used uh, in the study phenomenon? Okay, so uh, that's what the slow slip events. Okay. The, um, they slip a few centimeters every dozen months or so, and this reveals the plate boundary stresses there, but adds to the stress on the locked part of the fault. Below the transition zone, geodetic evidence suggests that the fault slides continuously and silently at long-term plate slip rates. From its surface trace offshore to a depth of possibly five kilometers, all remote from land, observations are few, and it remains unknown whether the fault's fault is stuck or slipping silently. Now, great subduction zone earthquakes are the largest earthquakes in the world and are the only source zones that can produce earthquakes greater than 8.5 magnitude. The Cascadia subduction zone has produced magnitude 9 or greater earthquakes in the past and undoubtedly will in the future. So that's their uh, uh, description. The last known megathrust earthquake in the northwest was January 1700, just over 300 years ago. Geological evidence indicates that such great earthquakes have occurred at least seven times in the last 3,500 years. Geological evidence indicates that such great 500 years and return interval of 400 to 600 years. 
To learn more about the history of Cascadia, you can uh, read the land level changes and turbitides. The turbitides are the cores that they um, found. They, they dug and got uh, some sediment cords, cords, cores. Uh, there we go. Look at that. And they can see what happened. Okay. And the, and the uh, chronology of them. Uh, going back 7,770 years. Okay, that's the ash from Mount Mazama, Mount Mazama Crater Lake. And there you go. So, going back to this, the sediments is what they uh, examined. Okay, the turbotides created by the Cascadia subduction zone earthquakes. And for more about Cascadia subduction zone, you go to USGS web page discussing this. The uh, CSZ may be unique among the world's subduction zones in that it produces very few, if any, earthquakes and ambiguously on the plate interface and coupled with evident occurrence of great megathrust earthquakes, the CSZ uh, must be much more strongly locked than other subduction faults. The geologic evidence has led to different interpretations, moreover, about whether the entire Cascadia subduction zone always ruptures in great magnitude 9 earthquakes or whether smaller magnitude 8 or 8.5 sized events also can break parts of the zone in between the fault rupture events. The magnitude 9 project, a University of Washington based research group, has been producing research on Cascadia subduction zone hazards and effects of large earthquakes in the Pacific Northwest since 2015. And, uh, okay, well, we read basically the, if you want, you can go to this as well. Here they have a beautiful map showing these things. Okay. And the depth kilometers to Benioff Zone. Vancouver, Oregon profile, Vancouver profile. Two contrasting models of lithospheric structure. Okay, look at that. It's amazing. All right, so I'll leave links below for you for this. And all of you who are there, please be very careful because these are, these are not small quakes. They're getting bigger now. Okay, thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.